this is Miss Finn from the Literacy Lab. Today, we will be reading a legend about Chinese New Year. Nian, the Chinese New Year Dragon. May hated springtime. Springtime meant Nian was hungry. Nian was the fierce dragon that used to rule the land until a magical warrior put a spell on him. Because of this spell, Nian was forced to hide in a mountain under the sea. But every spring, Nian came out to fill his empty stomach. He especially loved to eat little boys and girls. May was scared. Her whole village was scared. They could hear the rumbling of Nian's stomach. That's how they knew winter was over and spring was coming. The night before the first day of spring, the magical warrior visited May in her dreams. The warrior said to May, hundreds of years have passed and a new year is coming. Nian's power grows stronger and my spell grows weaker each year. I can no longer keep him in the mountain under the sea. You must defeat Nian. You must do this in 15 days or Nian will be free forever. My cane will help you. May asked, why me? You were born in the year of the golden dragon. It is your destiny. When May woke up the next morning, the magical warrior's walking cane was next to her pillow. May, Mama yelled, wake up. Nian is on his way. We must flee and hide. Mama herded the animals into the barn. Hurry, Nian will devour anything in his way. He'll eat our livestock and crops. With his large mouth, he can swallow many villagers in one bite. May had lost her father and little brother to Nian's mighty jaws the year before. May helped Mama hide, but then she remembered the warrior's cane and ran back to get it. I'll be right back. May stopped in her tracks. She heard a terrible roar and smelled a terrible smell. Nian made his way toward May. She could see his sharp teeth and claws. She could see his long, slimy tongue. May grabbed the cane. She also grabbed a cooking pot and banged it with the cane. She yelled, Nian, go away. You are not wanted here. Nian covered his ears with his big paws. He didn't like the noise. That gave May a wonderfully noisy idea. She yelled to the other villagers, make a lot of noise. The villagers obeyed. They banged pots, they clanged pans, they hollered, they hooted, they threw firecrackers at Nian. Nian fled back to his mountain under the sea. For five days, the villagers were happy. They drummed their drums and gonged their gongs. They whooped and hollered. They laughed loudly, really loudly, just in case Nian was listening. The villagers thanked May by giving her a beautiful red silk robe. May was wearing the flowing red robe when she heard screams and roars. Nian had returned, even hungrier and angrier than before. He had packed his ears with cotton to block out noise. May didn't have time to run. She threw a lantern at Nian. She covered herself with her red robe. Nian shielded his eyes from the redness of the robe and the brilliance of the light. He backed away in fear. That gave May a wonderfully bright idea. She said to the villagers, wear your brightest reds and shine your brightest lights. The villagers obeyed. They wore their reddest clothes. They hung red banners out their windows and doors. They placed bright lanterns everywhere. May cut a piece of her red robe and made a flag which she attached to the magical cane. She waved it to shoo Nian away. Nian fled back to his mountain under the sea. For, for five days, the villagers were delighted. They dyed all their clothes red. They burned fires all day and all night, just in case Nian was watching. On the 10th night, the magical warrior once again appeared in May's dreams. Nian is coming back and he wants revenge. Be very careful. Remember, you only have five more days to defeat him. May knew she had been lucky the first two times. This time, she needed a plan. So she came up with a wonderfully tricky idea. 
May took all the food in her house, put it in red bags, and stuffed them into a scarecrow. She dressed the scarecrow in her old clothes. She placed the scarecrow in front of her door. She told the villagers to do the same. The villagers obeyed. At the last minute, May shoved the warrior's cane inside the scarecrow. On the 15th day, Nian returned. He had covered his eyes with long eyelashes and packed his ears with cotton. The dragon stormed into the village, his jaws chomped on the scarecrows that had been filled with food. But when he got to May's scarecrow, he choked on the cane. The cane then magically turned into a leash. The magical warrior from May's dreams suddenly appeared. He captured Nian with his leash. Nian is conquered. He'll never be evil again. You've brought us good luck and fortune, May. You've fulfilled your destiny. Now I'll fulfill mine. The magical warrior mounted Nian, and together they turned into a stone statue in the middle of the village. The villagers were overjoyed that Nian was defeated, and they held a party in May's honor. They put food offerings in front of their houses. They lit lanterns. They threw firecrackers. They dressed in red. Some villagers dressed up as Nian and did a dance. They celebrated a new year without fear of the dragon. Gongzi, Gongzi, congratulations, congratulations. The villagers herald their heroine, May. Nian never harmed the villagers ever again. From then on, at the start of every spring, the villagers celebrated May chasing out Nian. They made a lot of noise. They wore a lot of red. They lit a lot of lanterns. And every spring, May gave a food offering to the statue of Nian and the magical warrior, just in case. The end. I hope you enjoyed this story about the legend of Chinese New Year.